Hey everybody, it's AJ with Hippie Fertilizing. I'm back up here at MicroLife with Ryan. Uh, our soil organic fertilizing expert. <laughs> so, so, today uh, we're gonna bring up one of my favorite products, Micro Grow Granular. This stuff is the bomb diggity. It's great for literally everything. I can tell you from my own personal experience, we have a customer, uh, if y'all look up my other YouTube video, Eric Anderson, his pine trees are coming back with a vengeance after like two months nice. of, nice. of a deep root inoculation with microgrow. Well, that's what it helps do. So yeah. Today we're gonna to talk about what's in the bag of microgrow, which is the reason why you wanna use microgrow. Um, so we're just going to run through the products that are inside of it and tell you the reason why we put each one of them in there and what they do. And then we're going to talk about the inoculant package that's inside of it. So the, the, the biggest piece that makes micro life, micro life. That's right. Exactly right. No life, micro life or no life, right? Yeah. Micro life or no <laughs> life, baby. So the first ingredient that we put in micro life is humates. Humates is a good source of carbon. Carbon is the building blocks of the life, you know, you're putting life in the soil. Um, it also helps increase your cation exchange capacity in the soil. We talked about that in our last video, cation exchange capacity. Your CECs. Right. And it also improves soil structure. Really enhances your soil structure so that it can hold the water, the roots, and I mean the water and the nutrients that your, your soil needs. So and essentially, keep in mind, as we go through all these products, uh, Humates is, is definitely a, one of the bigger factors. Uh, so are the natural sugars, we'll get to that, but they all help promote what's called soil flocculation. That's right. It's like a micro aeration to your soil. That's right. Let things move around more freely instead of be tightly locked up. Right. The way I like to explain it is like a, uh, you got soil dispersal, which happens when you use salt-based products or you just have a lot of clay, they lock in together real tight. It's like putting down a shower curtain. Right. What goes through a shower curtain? Nothing. Not a good one. That's right. <laughs> right? Uh, soil flocculation is, is analogous to having a cylinder full of marbles. Okay. So, you know, you got more spaces in between those marbles. That's exactly right. Pour a pitcher of water on a shower curtain, nothing goes through. Pour it through a cylinder of marbles, it flocculates through. That's right. So the second ingredient that we put in there is yucca. Yucca is a wetting agent which helps penetrate through clay soils, you know, gets water and nutrients around the root zone, which is where they need to be. Um, with these tight clay soils we've got here in our area, um, it helps open it up so that things can get where they need to go. Um, it also has some anti-insect properties which help protect your plants against pest insects. Uh, it also protects your plants from heat and water stress. So yucca is a good product on its own. Uh, and what's amazing, if I'm not mistaken, okay, something that they put in other products out there that kind of mimics some of the effects of, of uh, the wetting agent and the penetration is, is, a, is a product of soap. Okay. Right? <clears throat> so, you know, there's things that we want to have natural soap and this and that, right? It's one of the products they take out of the soap. I uh, forget the name right now. I'll, I'll, it's we'll, surfactant, I think is the word. Uh, well, no. it's, it's a specific product. Okay. Anyway, Yucca is the organic natural replacement for that that right. helps uh, with that soil penetration. That's right, that's exactly right. So the third ingredient we put in there is cornmeal. Woo -woo. Cornmeal is a natural slow release of the nutrients, helps prolong the feeding time. Um, it also has antifungal properties um, that help feed the good bacteria that fight off those harmful fungal pathogens that can be in the soil. Um, and it also is a good source of nitrogen. Flip side, uh, that's all true. Let's not forget, it is a, a good natural weed prevention. Right. It, right. it, it somewhat acts as a, a natural pre-emergent on top of all those good things Ryan just said. That's exactly right. So the next year that we put in there is we put kelp. Woo -woo. Kelp contains over 60 trace minerals. Um, it helps strengthen the plant's immune system. It can increase the hardiness of a plant, you know, fight off when we get too cold of weather, when we get too hot of weather. Um, and it also acts as a root growth stimulator. So, yeah, I love kelp. These, these products, uh, or all these, these 
parts that are a part of microgrow, uh, they're excellent for like landscapers or gardeners, or even you put down fresh sod. Before you put the sod down, put a nice layer of microgrow, right. and you will get some really awesome growth, exactly. healthy growth that's gonna naturally help fight all the junk that can happen to sod. That's right, <laughs> especially with the poor soils that we have. We say laying that down before you lay your sod, you're putting nutrition to your roots. So you're getting it in the zone where it already needs to get to instead of having to work and travel there. It's like a little little plant and grass insurance. <laughs> there you go, you know? plant insurance. I actually <clears throat> refer to the two of these products as our plant insurance policy. So yeah. I like that, you know, I like that. Better call micro. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing that we put in there is we, we add amino acids. Um, amino acids combined to form proteins, which proteins are good for all your nutrients and minerals that you need to make, also may help make nitrogen. Um, they also help break down your organic matter in your soils. We need to have more organic matter in our soils. Um, so, uh, and with that being said, organic matter in the soil is critical. It helps with porosity, of course, soil structure, you know, we kind of touch on the same things, but organic matter in the soil also is very critical for proper moisture retention. That's right. And when I say proper, because you can have a waterlogged area and that can develop other problems, or you can have a dry soil and good amount of organic matter helps it stay balanced. That's right. We <laughs> talked about water with a 3% organic matter, 18 inches deep, one acre can hold, what is it, 27,000 gallons of water? Actually, it's, it's, if you add 1% of organic matter to an acre, it increases the moisture or water retention by 27,000 27, gallons. That's a lot. You can have this reservoir in your front yard or backyard instead of it all going into your drain and going out somewhere else. So Yeah, it's, it, it's critical uh, in terms of reducing your need for irrigation, right. which is a big one that's like, no matter what's going on, it's uh, something who wants a big water bill. Nobody. I certainly don't. The other thing, okay, we're in Houston. I'm I'm out of League City, but what we experience like feels like every year is hurricanes. Yes. What would drastically reduce flooding from hurricanes or other strong weather events? Right. Uh, is increasing that soil porosity, organic matter, things like that, so that we do have less runoff. Right. So that it helps. Uh, reduce the load on the larger infrastructure. That's right. You're, you're long and accept more water as opposed to not. Right. So, um, next thing that we put in there is the natural sugars. We just talked about the natural sugars, but natural sugars give your soils and plants energy. Um, it's kind of main caveat of soil and plant energy, which we love so much. Woo -woo. Um, it also provides plant carbohydrates um, and food for the microbes. We're obviously all about supporting soil biology and what does that is natural sugars giving the plant what it needs so it doesn't have to work so much for it. So in a way, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it's, it's a little bit like having added molasses to the microgrow. That's exactly right. Right? That's exactly right. So, you know, you know around here, we're all about that SSB, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so then the last thing that goes into microgrow, which is probably the most important that makes microgrow microgrow, is the microgrow CM inoculant package that we put inside of it. Um, we put 63 beneficial strains of bacteria and fungi inside of there to help enhance the soil and support soil biology. So hold on, I just want to like like highlight this right here, okay? I've done my homework on organics, on biological inoculants, on feeding soil, so on and so forth. And you know, you always want to look for the best, right? Right. That's my job. That's my duty to give the best to my customers that I can find. Right. Let me tell you, hands down, nobody comes even close to the variety and diversity in the amount of biological inoculation in a single product. Right. So sorry. I just wanted to highlight that big time. That makes sense. Let's that, go on with that. That's true. What, so, 63? That's right, 63, and we're going to break them down. So we've got 33 species of bacillus. Woo! Your bacillus are mostly antifungal properties. Um, you've got some anti-insect properties in there. You also have um, soil-improving properties in there. 
Uh, your bacillus strains, I'll just name them because I've got them. We've got bacillus subtilis, bacillus firmus, bacillus amylolicofacians, bacillus lichenformis, bacillus pamilus, bacillus megatarium, bacillus coagulans, and bacillus pasturi. I can't say none of that. And they really, you really don't need to know their name. You really need to know what the purpose of them is. And the majority of them are antifungal, fighting off those bad pathogens that could come in, those fungal pathogens that could come into your, your area, brown patch, what have you. So, so I like to think of it like this, okay? They're kind of like the guards of the rhizosphere. That's right. You know? Boom! I like that. I do like that. You ain't breaking my defense. Uh, the next set is the Penny Bacillus. We put nine species of Penny Bacillus inside of there. You've got Penny Bacillus polymixa, Penny Bacillus durum, and you've got your Penny Bacillus esotoformans. Those are also antifungal properties. Um, they're also nitrogen-fixing bacteria. NFB. We love nitrogen-fixing bacteria. While there is no NPK ratio, and in future videos we're going to talk about the numbers that are on a bag, but this does not have those numbers on the bag. But there is still nitrogen content that this can pull from the air, use that nitrogen, put it in plant-ready form, and supply your plants and your soil systems with nitrogen. So like a little tidbit, people always ask, well, uh, how much nitrogen? What's the ratios? And I'm like, I don't care about ratios because it's about feeding the soil, not NPK necessarily. Uh, and I ask you to do this. It'd be really funny if y'all did. Take a deep breath. What did we just breathe the most of? Nitrogen. Right. So we have like what, 90, 78% uh, nitrogen right. in the air that we breathe typically. Uh, so it's like, it's all around us. We just got to give nature and soil what it needs to grab the resources that are already there. That's exactly right. I read a fact yesterday that there is 35,000 tons of nitrogen above one acre of soil. Holy biscuits. That's 70 million pounds of nitrogen above an acre of soil that these guys reach up, grab out of the air, mineralize, give it to the plant. Right. So, it's exactly right. It's amazing. So, next we've got Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas, we put six species of Pseudomonas. You've got your Pseudomonas fluorescens, you've got your Pseudomonas pudida, and you got your Pseudomonas areofacens. And I almost want to tell them, quit saying those words, dude. Where did you get that dirty mouth? <laughs> I mean, these are, <laughs> when it comes to microbes, these names are crazy. They, and so, because they are so crazy, we often don't ever think of looking at this stuff. Yeah. Or care about them, unfortunately. I mean, right. Too difficult to say, too difficult to treat. I mean, maybe that's the caveat. So. <laughs> Something like that. Next thing we got is we got uh, Streptomycetes. We got eight species of Streptomycetes. We've got Streptomycetes griseus, Streptomycetes lyticus, Streptomycetes colicolor, and we've got Streptomycetes nodosus. Those are your antifungal properties also. Last one's got a, um, it produces growth compounds. So it helps your plants grow. If they are, don't have the ability to have those compounds to grow, this does that, adding that to the soil helps that. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, it, it really enhances the growth hormones of a plant. Right. Which is critical. Very much so. <clears throat> kind of like paired with the kelp and everything else that's in, the, in the, the ingredients of the bag like we've discussed. Put all those together, mix with these microbes. If they've got uh, a certain property, the natural sugars will feed those uh, microbes and then they will enhance and those properties will be able to come to life. So, again, making more stuff available. Right, right, and supporting soil biology. Ten, yeah. ten hands down. So then the last things that we put in there are trichoderma. We put seven species of trichoderma. So all the ones that we've just mentioned were all forms of bacteria. Trichoderma are your forms of fungi. Fungi, you know, good fungi in the soil um, help fight off the bad fungi that could come into the soil. Right. So it's 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 almost like you're throwing them on offense. Right. One hundred percent. I call them little doctors, the little farmers. You know, your police officers in the soil that are helping helping enhance a community so that it is more beneficial, not overrun with harm and, and bad things that could happen, which don't promote your plant growth. So essentially kicking butt even more on pathogens. That's exactly right. This stuff is loaded. It's, it, it helps with brown patch. That's right. 
take all patch. Uh, as he said before, pest resistance is critical. That's right. Root rot, a lot of boxwoods or planks that are planted incorrectly or in too soggy area of waters because they're, they're overrun with water, they get root rot. This helps mitigate that from happening. And what I've seen at home is uh, if I put this down in the soil when I'm planting stuff, dude, it rocks. Like you start seeing new little growth a lot faster than you would uh, with you know your typical like chemical stuff or when you don't do anything. Right, right. I mean, it really does help protect. It allows the plant to, to get up to its fullest potential, if you will. You know, it protects it doesn't have to do so much because the plant's already been brought from somewhere else that's a little stressed and or it probably is stressed if it's too hot, too cold, whatever it is. And unfortunately, something I've learned from uh, my, my master certified arborist friends is that a lot of times you get trees, uh, citrus trees, oak trees, you name it, they're already uh, in poor condition and already subject to uh, stuff like root rot. and. You know, it's hard to really have a perfect system to where they can give us like a perfect plant. So that's what we get. Right. And this is a great way to help combat that because that it's one of the huge issues. You just bought a tree or something and man, it was already infected. How do you fix that? And unfortunately, most of these people out there, if you go to a big box store, okay, just don't listen to them because they don't know. <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh, and, and we're taught, well, if it has a disease or this or that or the other, go put a fungicide. Go put an insecticide. Well, it's not growing, so I did everything. Oh my God. You know how often I hear that? We don't want to hear that. You know, oh, it wasn't growing, so I just, and I didn't know what it was, so I just did a little bit of everything. Like, <laughs> threw the book at it. Awesome. No, you just committed chemical warfare on your soil. Very much so. Okay, and we want to, we want to revive it. We want to holistically uh, nurture the soil, not fight it, right. okay? And Work and with Mother Nature. Support soil biology. And support Mother Nature. That's right. Love her, don't fight her. You don't want to poison your mother. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> or Mother Nature, who supports your mother. That's right. Right? So that's those are all the ingredients, those are seven ingredients that are inside of a bag of MicroLife, or MicroGrow Granular. Um, buy it, use it. Do it. And what? Just 63 species of bacteria and fungi. That's right. That's, that's incredible. Like I said before, you're not going to find uh, more packed a diversity of biological inoculants than you will in any microlife product. That's right. Guaranteed. That's right. Not only that, a lot of products you have to buy two of to accomplish what's in this one bag. You got to buy your inoculants with your food. You know, here we put them both together, dynamic combo. Right. Wrong. So, you know, I know some people out there love to get really like DIY and nerdy. I don't. I don't want to spread it, water it, and forget it. <laughs> okay? I love this stuff, but uh, hippie fertilizing is all about uh, one thing in conjunction with, you know, so important soil biology and everything. But keeping it simple That's right working harder not smarter because when we make it all complicated i know because i'm human too i'm like i gotta do all this peace <laughs> i'm out yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right that's all all the ingredients so thank y'all very much for watching please like please subscribe check out hippiefertilizing.com check out microlifeorganicfertilizer.com and let us know what you think of the video that's right y'all have a groovy day remember Nobody knows grass like a hippie. Peace. Nice. That was good. I like that. That wasn't even that long. It wasn't 19.